Okay, so the bonnet. We've done the inside, um, we've repaired the rust. This is the, the bonnet that came off the panel van. So this one's really good, virtually no panel damage in it whatsoever. There's one little tiny mark up the front and the rust that's on it, whilst there's rust inside and outside, and we'll have a look at that in a minute, um, the, the issue is there was no holes to weld up, there was no real problems. This bonnet over here um, was one that we did along with the, the doors and stuff that came off an XB um, Fairmont, and we had to weld a lot of holes. So I'm gonna do, um, hammer up the repairs that have been welded on that. So we TIG welded those, and then they've now been sanded up, and I'll go through the process that I normally use to try and get those back nice and straight. Righto, so you notice this one's actually been deoxidine quite some time ago, and then we've done the weld since, so you can see where it's been um, sanded up there. I'm just going to run a file over these to find out what's low and what's high. Um, hope you like the new gloves. Oh, look at that, they're already going. I like to use these TIG gloves. I find I've got good feel with them. Um, looks after me hands and my fingernails. Um, yeah, they're available everywhere, but I just like those. Don't get a lot of wear out of them, but I find they're really good. So, two options here. One's a body file. I'll tell you the story about that in a minute. Well, you can just use a normal file. So this one's a... Um, uh, somewhere, so it's a lathe file. When we have a close look at that, you'll see it's just got one cut, it's not cut both ways. I like those. Um, don't know why, but I find they're really good. So if you just lay that flat on the panel, tiniest bit of pressure underneath just to stop bending the panel. And you'll see straight away that there's a ring there. So it's sort of marked the panel all the way around and now there's a ring. So clearly it's low. You know, and some people go, you can feel that, but this gives you a very clear, and you can see it goes right down into there. So I'll just grab a, um, a dolly, and I'll give that a bit of a flip. Okay, so I'm just going to use a flat dolly, and I might use the curved back. Obviously, I've got a low there, so I've got to try and get that up. And then I'm just going to use this flipper. That's something I've made. I've got a couple of different lengths in that. Um, you just need a bit of quality steel. Um, you can use spring steel. Um, if you want, this is just mild steel, but it's a bit of good, come out of a bit of angle line that was probably 40 years old, so I had BHP stamped in it, it was probably a good bit of quality steel from back in the day. And I just like the weight. We're going to flip that up now, so obviously it's a fairly wide area and it's low, so I'm going to need to push it up, so I'll probably use the curved back of the, the dolly, but also I'll turn it over and use the flat. And I'm going to use this flipper. And I like to use that rather than a hammer, because if I use a hammer, you tend to leave hammer marks in it, whereas because this is over a larger area, you can still leave a mark in it, but not so much if you're, when you're giving it a whack. And that's one I've made myself quite some years ago, and I've got a couple of different sizes of that. Um, and it's just made out of a good a bit of old, probably 40-year-old BHP steel that was in a bit of angle iron that I cut down, um, and then bent up to the shape. And the length here will give you the weight that you like and you feel, and it's really just how you feel about it. You can buy them, um, same steel, same deal as everything else. You can buy one in a brand name, and a lot of people also make them out of spring steel, which I haven't tried the spring steel, but I believe they're very good. So I'm gonna put some pressure in the middle there, and then I'm gonna tap around the outside and try and raise that center up. So I'll put that dolly in from the back. Probably doesn't look like it's doing much, but when we run the file back over, we should see that that's getting a bit smaller. So I'm going to change dollies back again. So we just get something with a bit more radius, and I'll just give that a bit of a rub from underneath. And you can actually see that metal moving, and all I'm doing is rubbing it backwards and forwards underneath. You'll actually see that metal moving. All right, and now I'll give her a bit more of a whack. So you can see here there's a couple of little highs. So as we're filing it, you'll see now 
really chasing it around. But where that weld is, the file's now picking it up. So we're getting closer to where we need to be. I probably just need to be a bit more brutal with it. So what I've got here, you've probably seen big leather sandbags. Well, they're full, either full of sand or they're full of um, shot, either steel shot or lead shot. And the idea is if you put that under a panel and you've got a high spot and hit it down, it enables that metal to go down, but the surround will stay up. So I'm actually going to use that on the top so I can give that a hit from underneath to bring it up a bit quicker. So I'm going to put that on the top and I'm going to try and just bring that there back up underneath. Don't like the angle, so we get another tool. Should have brought my toolbox, with me? So this is a really old hammer that I found down at Dad's workshop a long, long time ago, and I've got a handle that I'll put in it sometimes. I've got a short one and a long one, but I just love the shape of it. It's got that nice radius on it. So I'm going to apply that because I can't really get the hammer in that I wanted to get in there. So I'll give that... So you can see that everywhere I've hit it, it's come up. And now the process is to try and work out where you've got to go and bring it up. And go back to the flat dolly. So you see there now where the weld is, so we're up all the way around, we're getting very close. I mean, this would be, if I run the scotch bright over that now, you could just put skim a bog over that, it'd be fine. So depending on, because I've got a lot to do on this bonnet, I would go around and get them all roughed up and then make a decision on how much time I've spent and how much time you've got in the job and what the owner wants to how much filler they want because to get file finish that everyone talks about can take many, many hours. And realistically, the amount of filler that would be in that would be no more than what you'd put in a bit of high fill primer. So I'll give that a quick sand and um, you'll see what I'm talking about. So if I scotch bright that now, that'll look just like it's brand new, even though it's still a little bit away. Right, so I'm just gonna give that a sand up with some um, flexi strip. Um, I find these really good. It's better than using, you know, 40 grit or something and just not use, losing so much metal. And I've got a, an old sander. The other day I put some brushes in. Um, that takes that pad. So they're available from most good paint stores. Um, normally called a um, uh, strip, sand and strip or strip and something or other. So I'll just put this over it. So now when you run your hand over it, I can feel that's there, but I mean, that's close enough to put a skim over. So this particular bonnet was very rusty, um, had a lot of seal on it compared to what the Van one had. And you'll see we've had to weld holes all the way around. There was about 80 or 90 holes in it. And I've done all those with a TIG welder, um, copper dolly under the back for the bigger ones, just a dobber, a filler in it with a TIG. I've done them in the past with the MIG as well, um, with a copper dolly behind, give it a zap with the MIG, make sure you get your penetration, and then grind them off with the least amount of heat you can. 
and just leave them a little bit proud so you've got a bit of metal to work with and then you can knock them up. So to do this total job, this is going to take me the best part of a day to get this skin up so that it's ready to take some uh, the skimmer filler and put some primer on it. There's one with my name on it, those two big long f***ers. No, he's got six of them. I went down. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Righto, so up the back here, where that sealer goes around that big opening on the other side, that's where the rust is. So right across the back here was really bad and there's, you know, 20 holes across here. And what I normally do is get a steel ruler, just have a look and see what damage I've done when I've welded those up and where the metal's moved. So I've got like a high through here and the heat from that weld probably has shrunk the metal and pulled that in and caused that to go both sides. So I'm going to stick a dolly under there and just hammer those up a bit and see if that'll stretch out. Um, and if not, uh, we might need to do a heat shrink. So we'll just have a look and see how we go. So when, so when you weld anything pretty much, most people think when you weld it, it actually distorts the metal and, and stretches it, but it actually pulls the metal and shrinks it. And because it's pulling, the metal's got to come for somewhere and that's why it tends to, to turn into an oil can or you know, drop the level down or raise it up. So I'm just going to run the hammer over these and, and knock them down a bit, try and relieve the stress out of the world. have um, you know your flat dolly underneath on this flat panel area and then you can see like the hives and so what I was saying earlier about hammer versus the, the slapper I just wanted a bit more direct onto the the world this time but you can see a few hammer marks and that's what I find the, why I like the slapper and you can see there there's a ridge coming down there and that ridge tapers out about here so it's flat here now it's got a ridge there, so I'm just going to try and take the stress out of these. And I'm hitting that quite hard. I'm just going to change the dolly over. There's something with a, a flat surface but the curve so I can just target my weld a bit better. Now, there's a little bit of weld left on those, you can see. I'm just gonna take that off. I can either file it off, or I can do it with, um, with a decent sharp 40 grit, which I might use. So these are just like a 40 grit. You know, there's plenty of manufacturers making now. Um, I tend to buy whatever's cost effective that we've had some history with. So I'm just gonna use the, the very tip edge of that. It's nice and sharp. So if you've got a nice new one, you're going to have um, just be able to take that top off. And I'm trying not to take metal off from around it because obviously I'm going to run out of metal. So you can, as I run my hand over it, I can sort of feel where roughly it's going to go. And, and I tend to use my hands a lot. So if it's a bit high, I've got this hand underneath pushing a bit of weight up where it's low and then using my thumb just to push it down. And you'll be amazed how much you can move it with your hands. So there you can see through here, got that oil can. So we seem to be high, very high there. Pretty good through there, there though. Now through that center section, compared to what it was, it's very good, but we've obviously got something major going on there. Trying to find out where the stress is. 
once it's been welded, the metal gets pulled around. So by having the dolly and moving it around, I'm just trying to slap it up and it, it tends to just move it. And like now that's pretty good, that's pretty good, but it's still very much low in the middle. And that probably is because there's a weld here and here and nothing here. So either these need to be stretched a bit or I would look at possibly putting just a little heat shrink in the middle of that to pull it up. I'm just going to put the dolly out on this edge up there and try and get this down a bit because it's clearly a bit high there. Now that's a whole lot better. There is a natural curve in that. You know, if you look at the, so a straight rule is not the best thing to use sometimes. It's another little tool of mine that I use. So that's a bit of Tasmanian oak. Be 40 by four mil, probably. Just at your local timber store or your Bunnings. And I use that to stick on here now, like that. And you can see there, there's virtually no gap all the way along. So out on the factory ridge, it gives you an idea what you've got. And as you come over, you can see there's a big low just there. Did you get that? Can you see that? Yeah, I did, yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm just sanding the texture and stuff off. Can we use these for everything? But I use Tasmanian oak because um, it's a very stable timber. If you go the cheap way and buy a bit of pine, um, it won't last and it'll warp really badly. So that just gives me a bit cleaner edge. We can see what's going on. So it'll follow the body panel really nicely. So, you know, if it's straight, you sort of go, okay, where's the problem? Well, if I put that down on there now, and just a little bit of pressure each end, and then as I slide it across, you'll see any problems. Right there. And then we're back to that ridge again, and we're actually low there. Right, so that whole section here has got to come up. Now, if you can imagine if this was on the, the shell and you didn't have access to it, that's not a lot of filler. You know, it's probably one and a half mil and there'll be plenty of bonnets around with that much in it. The advantage we have is we've got it off the car, like off the shell, so we can do a little bit more to get that closer so that we limit how much filler we've got in there. So Tasmanian oak, really good tool. Right, so I'm gonna use this dolly from the back now. So I'm gonna use this edge, that sort of radius part there, and I'm gonna come from the underside put some pressure to try and stretch that metal a little bit. And it's almost like having a little English wheel in there because you'll probably see in there the metal moving. And I'm probably nearly pushing as hard as I can. Not quite, but nearly. Remember, and I'm an old fella. So, I mean, that's quite reasonable there at the moment. But when I come across, by coming across, you'll pick up where your highs and lows are. So I'm thinking that that there, because there's been no weld, probably just wants a little, little heat shrink. Doesn't even need to be red hot, just a little heat there. It'll just bring that down. And I mean, someone, I've got an English wheel here, but I don't use it very much because I haven't had a lot of use with it. If you know what you're doing, you can probably put it in there and put a wheel over that but I find with my limited experience with it, I'll probably do more damage. So I tend to do it the way I've always done it. So let's do that. We'll put a bit of heat on there. That'll be good for the video. What the f is going on? Oh, now we've got it. So I'm just gonna do a small heat shrink here. Now the thing about heat shrinking, there's a, like a lot of people have a lot of ideas. I've never used one, but I probably should try one as people use like a, a disc where you actually run the disc over a shrinking disc and the disc hits the high areas, heats them up and you cool the metal down and that shrinks the metal. 
And that's pretty much the process all the way through. You're trying to heat an area up that has got too much metal, so it's like a high, and you're going to heat it up, and when you heat it up, it'll actually come up higher, and then with a dolly underneath, like this, the idea while it's hot is to actually move the metal with the tool, so if it's this, I'm going to actually be trying to hit it to push the metal into the centre, and then once I've finished doing that, I'm going to hit it in the centre and drive that metal back into itself. So you're pulling the metal up to a mountain, knocking the mountain back down, and that's going to then put that metal back into the centre, and therefore less metal should take the high down. The cooling process then, as you cool it, will then shrink it down. Now, if you've got, it's, it's something you learn from experience, I guess, but if you only got a small bit here, I'm not even going to make this red hot. I'm just going to heat it, get a little bit of heat in it. I'm going to try and pull the metal around a bit and then cool it, quench it, and that'll pull it and probably enough. But if I've got a big, a dent that's been put in from a big heavy knock from the other side and it stretched the metal up, then I need to heat that sufficiently to drive it back into itself. Then I'm going to apply, um, that's how it'll be red hot, and I'm going to apply the water and it's going to pull it back in again. So the complexity of it, I guess, is just knowing how much you need and how much you don't. The upside is if you shrink it too much, all you've got to do then is put the dolly on it and hit it some more and stretch it back out again until you find that nice level playing field that you're looking for. So we'll give it a go. Haven't done one for a few months, so. Um, it might be a bit rusty. Now, I've got Oxy here, which is handy. If you don't have Oxy, there's other options, and I'll show you some of those in a minute. So, just a nice flame, not too much noise. Um, the hottest part of the flame is the tip of the blue. So, if you're trying to do the heat really in a small area, you want to be right down next to the blue. If you're trying to do a larger area, then it's obviously it depends where you put that flame. So I'm going to start on the outside, I always have, don't know why. Work my way in and you can see that rising and the bluing effect there. Now I'm going to knock it back into itself. Now as you can see there the, by the marks from the, the slapper, I've hit that pretty hard. And you can see that coming down. If we get our stick. So we've now lost that high that was holding that stick up, but the whole lot's a little bit low now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my edge of the dolly. And I'm just going to give that a push, just watch, watching the skin that I don't bend it. Might just give that a bit more of a flip. So what you've got to remember when you're doing all this is every time you hit that metal, you're making it just that little bit thinner. And the way an English wheel works is when you run it through the wheel, you make the, the wheel squashing the metal, making it thinner. And because it's thinner, it gets bigger bit like rolling out pastry, make a pizza. The thick, and you roll it out, gets thinner and thinner, and as it gets thinner, it gets bigger. So if you're just hitting that area only, that's gonna grow. So if you've got a, a dent that's high, the more you hit it, the higher it's gonna get, because it's gonna shrink, the, it's gonna stretch the metal, and the metal's gotta go somewhere. So if you've got a really high piece of metal sticking up, from a, like a force dent from the other side, you really need to get it red hot, knock it back into itself and cool it. So, I mean, that's come out pretty good. Not too much damage there from that little shrink. And I'm feeling like we could probably do another one here because this feels quite ugly through here at the moment. So I said I was going to give you an alternative option. So you need heat. Um, these are a pretty handy gadget. If you haven't got Oxy, you could probably do some um, smaller style shrinks with these. I've done it before, and we'll just have a bit of a go here, see if we can do one with that. So, you just got to always make sure you've got your tools ready, because it doesn't stay hot for that long. So, because there was quite a few welds there, I'm just going to put a bit of heat in that and, and knock it up. 
So the thing about this is it's not as intense a heat into a small area like the Oxy is, but heat's heat. So we've got everything we need, I think. That's a good example. You see how much that grew. Now that's flattened down really nice with the, the bar. And see how it didn't quench like the, the Oxy did? Oh, that was perfect, really. I'm pretty wrapped in that. You see the line now from here to here is really good. And from this point here to here, this has got like a bit of an oil can going on. And I find when I do these, that's probably coming from here. So as we work our way across, that'll take the big belly out of the back. And then once it goes back onto the frame and it's got the glue back on it, it'll pretend to pull all that into shape. But I think that's a pretty good result using that gadget rather than using the Oxy. If I run the file over that now, just where I've done that shrink, and see what it looks like, and you only get one go, or you, and I say you only get one go, you get a couple because you just, if you deoxidine it, again, it'll come back up all in one colour, like that matte look, and then you can have another go at it. Right, I say, I'd probably fiddle with that a bit more, but I mean, we can't be here all day doing this for the camera, so I'm just going to put the file back on it, put my Nancy gloves back on. So I'm just, again, got my hand underneath with a little bit of support. So I don't know what your light's like from here, but from here it's really good. So you see here we've got a low and another big low here. So where I've shrunk that, it's probably a little bit much. And then around there, so there's a weld there. So that's pulling it down. These welds are pulling that down. So as with the front dent, there's probably not much in it. Can't see. There's not much in that. I mean, you get away with that if you wanted to. You know, that's not bad. But what we can do, now that we know where the problems are, we'll get our little roller in the back here again. Work their muscles again, give that a bit of a rub up. And then I'm going to knock that down. Looks a bit high to me. So by rubbing it up with a file, gives you a really clear indication where you've got to hit it. And then just like that, we've reduced the size of that down to half the size. So the file's touching here, there's a little low there. So in true, if you wanted to do a true file finish, you'd be in the back knocking that up, knocking that down, file, file, knock it up, knock it down, and you'd get to a point where it'd be all perfectly flat. So I'm just going to go with the old sandbag on the top, Nice round hammer in the middle of that heat shrink. And I guess it's something over years you learn where you, roughly where your hands are and where you're going to hit that. Give that a couple of hits. So we're right out here, quite pronounced there. And I'd say that was one of my hits there. Lost the dolly, here it is. Flat dolly. Now you can put something like that in the middle of that and hold a bit of weight up against it and then hit it all the way around the outside and that's the same effect as hitting it from underneath. I'll put that under there. Okay, so now we've got touching metal here, through here, around there, it's a bit of a low there. So 
It's like that story, you can keep tap, tap, push it, pull it till it's all filed and then you file finish. Or you can say, I'm happy with that. Run your sander over it with your scotchy. Someone pulled the plug. I normally have these all hooked up on about five cords that I can trip over. So I like them because they take very little product off the job. And then now you put that on and you're thinking that's not far off. Right, so I've been using the flat file, this one. Um, that I mentioned earlier, which is the lathe file, and we'll do a close-up in a minute on that. Um, I've been using that where I would probably normally use my old faithful here. So it's a, a body file, proper body file, very coarse. You just got to be careful of edges and stuff with it. Um, I really like it, and the daggy old bit of timber on it, when I first started all this stuff doing the first uh, back in the old burgundy car, I needed to get one of these, so I believed, and I couldn't afford to buy one, so I got a bit of timber from down the old man's workshop, and made the shape up to suit my hands and screwed the, you know, flattened the face off and screwed that on it. And I've just stuck with that ever since. So that's probably been kicking around about 40 years now. And I've got used to it. And these are a bit coarser. They take metal off quite quick. So if we go back over that area we've been on and you can see there how much metal that's taken off. So there's the cost of that for a starter and whether they're available wherever you are or you can just get a good clean sharp file, preferably a new one. A good solid quality file, you know, a new one, you'll be able to do exactly what you need or if you've got one of these or you've got the dollars you can go and buy one with a nice flash handle and all on it. Just these, when they're new and very sharp, can do as much damage. You know, if you tip that on the side it'll put a big groove in it. And when you come around here, Josh, you'll see just how much metal that took off in a very short period of time. So see how sharp the cuts are? Yeah. So this is back on the panel van bonnet. Now, like I said, this has got very little damage on it. I'll just run this file over and show you, like on a good panel, what it should look like. So very light pressure. Remembering it's not attached to a frame, so... I can see that's got a bit of a dip there. I think that's from it not being on the frame. I'll just hold that up. If you come around there, Josh, you'll see, if you get the light right, those scratches go all the way through, but there is, see that defined area there? that's what's signifying to me there's a slight low here. So it's, it either could have been just from when it's been glued to the shell. It's very little, but it's there. And that's the idea of it. You run the file over, and because this has been deoxidant, gives you a nice colour to work off. And that'll just tell you if you've got any little pin dents. Now we've just got rust we've got to work with, but other than that, it's pretty good. We'll do a little bit there. So it's really gentle, don't put too much load on it. Now, normally you just run your hand over it and say there's nothing wrong with it, but if you don't have that skill in your hands, you can run a file over and it'll show you what's going on. And then the same applies with that flat file. And it's actually slightly better. Doesn't do as much damage, not as sharp, like not as coarse. And then if I wanted to brag up, I could say my bonnet file finished. Because I ran a file over it. So see there? There's two very slight highs there, which means there's probably a little low behind it, and there's a frame that goes through there on the other side. So that would be when we probably tried when we removed it, we've probably given it a little hit from the other side with the, the scraper. Righto, so we're now ready to deoxidant and put some um, primer on this. So that'll be it for this one. 
Um, so that'll be, it had been stripped, so now we've done all the paint, removed all the rust, fixed the dents, welded the holes. Um, and in the third one, you'll see me actually prime this up and take it through and we'll put the new green for the panel van on and you'll be able to see the colour as well. So that'll be good.